Hey everyone, I'm Dustin Lucas. Thanks for tuning in to this month's Shutter Magazine article, How to Get Super Resolution Raw Files in Photoshop version 22.3. So this is an exclusive feature um, in Adobe Camera Raw, um, which opens into Photoshop, in Adobe Camera Raw 13.2. So for super resolution files, right, doubling the dimensions of your image. Do you need all those pixels? Well, all those pixel peeping people out there are probably, you know, hugging their 40, 50, 60 megapixel sensor uh, camera. They're getting these massive large files. And I mean, end of the day, it all comes down to what output you're using, right? So if you're printing large scale or you want to upscale like a 24 megapixel camera, as I've done here, you want to upscale that to get double that resolution, but also have a raw file to have a non-destructive workflow. Super resolution brings that to the table. So I have this file here that I've already rendered, already done my adjustments to, and you can see at 100% here the difference between uh, the super resolution file and 100% here on the original raw, right? So. Let me show you real quick here so you see 100% is taking me to there and 100% is going to take me all the way in here. And look at that detail. I mean, it's insane. So looking at the super resolution feature and the new ACR 13.2, I mean, it's a game changer, especially for Adobe users, not just because it doubles the pixel size, right? We've, we've been able to do that on one has a resize software, Topaz has a gigapixel software. I mean, it, there's been plenty of resizing softwares out there, but what those softwares lack are the ability to have a DNG. Um, for, so for Adobe users, you have a digital negative. That file is non-destructive. It plays nicely with being able to go back, see your adjustments, and that's what I love about the super resolution feature you still have all your adjustments that translate over to images and you can do it to multiple images at once. So let's jump into ACR 13.2 and dive into some of those features. All right, before we jump into the Adobe Camera Raw 13.2 features, um, we have to open up our raw file into Photoshop, right? So the uh, feature that I like to use from Lightroom typically when I'm going into Photoshop is the edit in feature but that doesn't work. It's gonna open our file up as a TIFF or a PSD. So what we have to do is we have to save metadata to files, which if you have multiple images, you're gonna to wanna to do that in grid mode. Um, but as long as you select them and do save metadata to file or command S, that will save out the XMP. We can right click on the image and do show in finder. That's the quickest way to come find this file. Now keep in mind, right, this is the original um, preview here. We don't have our XMP file. So all we have to do is drag that raw file into Photoshop. And now that it's opened up, we can start working on the super resolution feature. So it's pretty quick, um, pretty quick process here. So you notice that I have all my adjustments, they carried over uh, my uh, custom profile here. We just need to right click, choose enhance, and that's gonna open us up into the uh, enhance preview. Now, as you see, I have this little spinning wheel here. It's trying to render the super resolution automatically. Now, if I choose on particular parts of the image, it's gonna look pretty rough, right? It's not a great preview at all. Um, it's zoomed way far in, um, and it just, in my opinion, it looks like garbage, <laughs> right? So um, you're not really getting a good idea of what this is gonna look like. I mean, it's it's looking poorly sampled all over the place, especially on the skin tones. Um, just looks super harsh, right? So um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is it's gonna take five minutes or less. Um, we'll go ahead and hit enhance and let that run. Now, during this process, what it's gonna do is it's gonna save out another file and it's gonna sit right next to the raw. All right, so here we go. We have our DNG file here. Um, already saved, and as you see, it has enhanced built into the name, so you know it's an enhanced file. So I have my original here. You can zoom into there at 100%. Right? Um, let's take this to 100%. So we make sure that's actually giving us a rendering. 
zoom out. We go to this file, zoom into 100%, and there you go. I mean, the level of clarity in this at that um, zoomed in, I mean, that looks great. Um, I think we'll get a little better of a comparison once we get to the um, resample, which is the way you'd normally resize an image in Photoshop, and we can compare that to uh, the super resolution. You can really see the difference there. So a couple things here before we take this file into Photoshop are I always like to mess with the um, raw uh, preferences and specifically how we're going to open these files up into um, into Photoshop here. So I'm going to open up as a smart object so that way we have a non-destructive image. So when we open this up into Photoshop, we can always go back into Camera Raw, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, we don't need to do any output sharpening. Um, we're going to keep at 300, but you know my pixels here listed at the bottom and here, 12,000 by 8,000. I mean, it's massive, right? It literally doubled the size of my image. Um, you know, for the sake of this, you know, 8 versus 16 bit, Completely up to you. I keep it in Adobe um, RGB working space if I'm still working on my file. Um, either one of these is fine. I usually keep it at 8. I'm not too worried about it. That's a um, crazy amount of space, or specifically what I'm doing to this image doesn't need 16-bit. Go ahead and hit OK. And now we can do Open Object. Now, what a smart object does is it doesn't necessarily give you a flattened background layer, which is typical uh, for a... Um, file that you're going to open up into Photoshop, but you have a smart filter here that you can. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit done. So now we have our enhanced file here. Now, if I wanted to go back into, if I wanted to go back into the raw settings, all I have to do is double click here, and it immediately opens my file back up. So if I wanted to brighten it. You know, it's a little extreme, but I can click OK, and it's going to update that. Now, if you're duplicating the background layer or doing any um, image layers, of course, with your actions and adjustments you're doing, it kind of defeats the purpose of having a non-destructive edit. But I just wanted to show you real quick how the smart object gives you that ability. Um, let's see. Go ahead and click OK. And now we have our file ready to start editing. So the first thing I want to do um, in comparing the super resolution file, which I have here, versus a resize file, just to see them side by side using resample, excuse me, um, when I'm changing the image size, which one looks better. So let's dive further into that. So now that I have the original file in its dimensions and the super resolution file, let's compare side by side uh, the images at 100%, right? So if I do Command-1, that takes me to 100%. And you can see on this image, no sharpening has been applied. This is just open from Camera Raw. If I jump into the original resolution image, you can see at 100%, it's much smaller. That's obviously because it has a different pixel dimension, right? It's 4,000 by 6,000 versus the super resolution file, which is 12,000 by 8,000. So just to show you real quick, comparison between the two of those. So what we want to do is we want to zoom out here on both, command zero, and I am going to resample this image. So option command I is going to take me into the um, image size option here. So if I turn on resample, which it already is, I have a few options, right? I have automatic. I have bicubic smoother, which is typical for enlargements, but it's going to make my image softer, right? So I don't necessarily want to do the softer option. I definitely want to do preserve details. Now, if I zoom in here, even though this is over 100%, I have to be able to get an idea of what the um, sharpness or softness is going to be. If I turn off reduce noise entirely, this should give me the sharpest option that I have. So I can go through each of these options. Let's 
softer on the eyes, preserve details. Didn't really get too much sharper there. Let's zoom out just a bit. Comparing a little bit with the brick here. We get a little bit better of a rendering from 100%. Not really. So I'm going to stick with preserve details enlargement. And I am going to put reduced noise to about 25%. That's typically what I've tested in the past. But you know what? We could just put this to zero just so we can see side by side. And if we do need to reduce noise later, we can. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, what's important here, right, is that we have to do 12,000. to get a true rendering, right? So let's go over here. And this is where you're going to see right the difference in our image here. So let me drag this up just right there. OK, so let's go through our options. By cubic smoother. See how soft that got? Preserve details looks pretty good. It's got sharper. Preserve details 2.0. It actually got softer. So let's go to preserve details enlargement. Now this was one where I was putting some noise reduction on it. Let's put it at 15 before, after, before, after. So let's go ahead and click OK. So that way we can see side by side comparisons. So we are going to. Go into 100%. Try and get that same kind of frame there. Just so we can kind of have. Oh. A little bit of like an overlap. Not sure why it's moving around on me. Right. So enhanced. Look at this detail here. And in the faces, and the difference between just the softness, I mean, I feel like this has so much more clarity right out the gate. And I don't think even if I would have done no noise reduction at all, would have really created this level of detail. I mean, this to me is insane. Um, let's look at this brick in this wall here real quick. If we put that right up. Five. Resized image enhanced. I mean, I I feel like the detail is still pretty good on that brick, but I feel like on their faces, that's where the biggest change was. Let's go back here. Trying to get those lined up.
right? So enhanced image, resampled image. So I mean, with the detail in the background, the detail on their skin, I mean, for me, an image like this, the super resolution is the winner. I mean, I'm loving this feature, and this is one of the, I'd say, fe first feature in a while that has really impressed me um, with its um, with its ability and something that I'd actually be able to put into my workflow. Now, what's really insane is how detailed this image in is. Once I apply some sharpening to it, it almost starts to get um, overdone, right? So. If I want to apply some, um, and just to kind of show you what we're working with in the sharpening panel. Um, where did I go here? Um, default sharpening going on. Um, so I'm not really applying much at all in Adobe Camera Raw. But what I want to do is I want to apply some of my sharpening output sharpening on top of this just to see where this sticks out even further So as I have even more, and I'm going to zoom in here a little bit further. I know it's not necessarily going to, yeah, it's not going to help with the resolution. But now I can enhance that even further with some high pass sharpening. And I'll, I'll run that on this image as well. And maybe I can turn up the high pass to kind of fix the softness with this image. But we'll see. Maybe we can use another blending mode. Hard light, turn up to 100%. I mean, there's just not really a sharpening option to really make it look clear. I mean, the clarity here looks better to me. This starts to get overly, sh overly, overly sharpened because of the um, lack of sharpness that's already there so I mean again another win for the super resolution here versus there um, so that's it I mean showing full detail in with that um, I am a uh, I'm a believer in the super resolution well there you have it the results are I am honestly impressed with the super resolution uh, tool in the Adobe Camera Raw software. So upscaling RAWs um, with the confidence that the details, which in what we do, details matter. Um, in an image like this, that type of detail is important, um, especially for feature to uh, double my resolution, right? So I have um, this image, it's, it had a little cropping in it. Um, but without resampling anything, I mean, the, my native resolution is just under 12,000 by 8,000. So that is insane for that level of um, detail. And I can work non destructively, right? So I've got all my layers, I've got everything I need to do here. So if I need to take this image in further, um, I can do that. I have all of these options to take it back from here. To there right so excuse me here to here so um, what's awesome is, is I have that ability to go back to um, the Adobe camera raw option um, if I want to change this now of course when I got image layers that doesn't help but just to kind of show you those different options um, right away so working non-destructively on the DNG that's pretty awesome I think that's a great feature especially for Adobe users certainly a win um, you know for so this isn't going to be for every workflow right large-scale work definitely 
Um, and you might be thinking, should I double the resolution before I do all my editing in Photoshop? Should, should I, you know, should you wait till you're done editing and then double the uh, scale size at the end, sharpen, all that kind of stuff? And that's a good question. I mean, you have this super resolution feature, which is going to make a huge file. I mean, I had to save this as a PS. Um, I think at one time it had to be a PSB file because it was so large. It was more than like four gigs. So you have to be careful as your files get larger and larger and larger. When you start to duplicate that image layer, um, duplicate your background layer, I mean, your files are going to get massive. So it is, you know, kind of becomes a limiting factor for your computer system. So, but this is definitely something I would do for architectural work. Um, you know, where clients are smaller in my frame and I want to print this larger. Um, I won't have any issues printing, you know, without having to resample this, which is pretty awesome. I mean, I have a pretty good size image of, you know, 26 by 40, right? Um, pretty close to that file size. So, I mean, that's a pretty large um, out of the box size. So, I can still upscale this. I can still resample this if I wanted to make it, um, you know, uh, 40 by 60 or something. So, um, definitely a lot of details, and I highly recommend trying it out for yourself. Um, it's an exclusive feature in the Adobe Camera Raw version 13.2. So for you subscription-based Adobe users, it's a free feature um, included in that. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Try it out. Thanks for tuning in for this month.